Okay, today we're going to discuss about the spirochetes infection. So, the spirochetes infection includes here the infections caused by the the bacteria which belongs to your spirochetes. So, when we speak about the spirochetes, so those are the bacteria which are helical. They are plexus. Okay, basically they are long and they are spiral. And they contain here the endoflagella or the periplasmic flagella. Other name for that is your axial filament. And that is responsible for their movement, responsible for their corkscrew motility. Okay, so we'll be discussing about the spirochetes here. These are actually a gram-negative bacteria. And they are microaerophile. That's a discussion in your bacteriology. So this includes here the, the genus uh, Treponema, which is the cause of agent of your syphilis. The Borrelia is the cause of agent of your Lyme disease. And we have also your Leptospira, which is the cause of agent of the Leptospirosis. But for our discussion, we'll be discussing only the Treponema, which is the syphilis infection. And we have the Borrelia, which is your Lyme disease infection. Okay, so we have here your Treponema. So basically, the Treponema, we have divided here into your Treponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum. Again, this is the cause of agent of your syphilis. And we have here the subspecies pretenue, cause of agent of your yos. And Treponema pallidum, subspecies endemicum, which try to cause here your endemic syphilis or your non venereal because nothing non venereal that one is non sexually transmitted or you call it was your behel and we have your treponema pallidum subspecies caratium which try to cause here the pinta so first we discuss about the syphilis okay again the syphilis is primarily caused here by your treponema pallidum subspecies pallidum so this is considered to be the considered to be the most um, prevalent spirochetes infection in the U.S. and even in worldwide. Okay, so again, a syphilis could be transmitted by number one sexual. So sexual, so I try to co-infect with the HIV because they have the same mode of the infection, sexual contact. But it doesn't mean that. If the patient would have uh, syphilis, it doesn't mean the patient would have the HIV because remember, they have, I mean, they are a different causative agent. But most likely since for those patients or infected patients who are sexually active, so since they have the same mode of transmission, so most likely for those patients which is positive for the HIV, they are also positive for the syphilis, but not always. So, this co-infection. The second one, you get infected by the syphilis through your transplacental or your congenital infection. So, I mean to say the mother is um, pregnant, possibly for the syphilis, and eventually the baby could also acquire the infection. Third one, we could also get syphilis infection by blood transfusion. But remember that the bacteria, Treponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum, is could be killed here by a hot temperature, a cold temperature, or even or even drying up. And therefore, the incidence related to your blood transfusion transmitted syphilis infection has been reduced already. It's because here, number one, because of the strict uh, screening of the donors in the blood bank as to the blood bank donor. And second one, because again, when the blood is being collected in the blood bank, that's being stored in the blood bank craft. And again, the bacteria die in a cold temperature and therefore expect to have your less uh, infection transmission related to your blood transfusion. Okay, now we have here the stages of the uh, infection. So we start here with the primary stage. So the primary stage is characterized here by at the site of the, um, I mean, at the entry of the bacteria inside the body of the patient, they will have here an initial, uh, um, again, as the bacteria try to enter the body of the patient, so we'll have here the thickening of the AC or the endothelial cell membrane plus aggregation of your cells, which includes your 
lymphocytes, macrophages, and we have also the plasma cells. And the primary stage, characterized here by the appearance of the chancre or the lesion occurring 10 to 90 days after the infection. And this lesion here is characterized by solitary, painless, and this one is a race with well-defined na borders. Kapag sinabing well-defined na borders, so para siyang may ganyan talaga may borders that would identify that one is a lesion. And again, the lesion here, most likely found here within the outside of the, um, the penis of the male patient. And for the female naman, most likely that one is inside its vagina, their vagina, or even the cervix. Since nasa lobe siya, most likely it go unnoticed. And therefore, it would be very difficult here to really eradicate the infection, especially for those na mga sexually active. And again, since ang lesion ay makikita sa loob in ng vaginal cervix ng female patients, most likely hindi siya nakikita. And therefore, you could not really eradicate the infection. Okay, so the lesion here try to last for one to six weeks. And after one to six weeks, the lesion here try to heal spontaneously. So, nawawala siya. A laboratory test that would diagnose patient to be positive in the primary stage. So we have the dark field microscopy. We'll be discussing that one later on with the different laboratory tests and their principles. And then serological tests, which is only RPR. Uh, rapid plasma reagent will only the one who's going to give a positive result, the serological test on the primary stage. Okay, next we have here the secondary stage. So the secondary stage, once the patient here is left untreated, it could go to the secondary stage. It is characterized here by dissemination of the bacteria to other parts of your body. So the secondary stage characterized here by the appearance of your condylomata lata or condolimata, condylomata latum. Condolimata lata or condylomata latum is a wart, warty like lesion. Lesion pa din siya, pero wart, parang siyang wart like lesion. Um, the secondary stage characterized here by okay, the, the entry to the secondary stage occurs one to two months after the disappearance of your primary chancre. So the patient also have fear the secondary stage characterized by the generalized lymph adenopathy, enlargement of the lymph nodes with the manifestation of fatigue, fever, pharyngitis. Plus, the patient would also have the skin rash, rash here found at the skin, or the rash could also be found in the mucous membrane. Most likely, the rash here could be found in the palms and soles, palm and soles of the feet of the patient. And then, the patient also have here the early neuro, neurosyphilis or the involvement of the CNS. So, this is characterized here by... Again, the involvement of the nervous system includes the symptoms of visual disturbances, hearing loss, and we have also here the facial weakness. And then the lesion here would try to persist for eight weeks following spontaneous healing. Okay, for the laboratory test here for the secondary stage, still have the dark field microscopy. The dark field microscopy still diagnosing here in the secondary stage because the patient would still have the lesion. The lesion is in the form of your condyloma, condylomata lata or condylomata latum. Another one, serological test could also give positive results for that in the secondary stage like your VDRL, RPR, or even your antibody, terponema antibody testing. Okay, the next stage we have here the latency period. So, the latency period here is a stage wherein the patient do not have signs and symptoms and the patient also less infectious, non-infectious at all, except if the patient is a pregnant patient. In the case of the pregnant patient, the patient is still infectious. Especially, um, I mean, the patient could still transmit infection to the baby if the patient is pregnant. Okay, we divide your latency period here as early latency period, which is less than one year. Try to last here for one year, less than one year. And late latency period here will try to last for more than one year. Then laboratory tests, when the patient is on the latency period, it could be your serological test like your non-treponemal test. This is your non-treponemal test. VDRL, RPR, could also have the treponemal antibody testing. So we'll be discussing that later on, kung ano yung mga tests na yun.
Okay, the next stage we have here, the tertiary stage. So, the tertiary stage occur here 10 to 30 years. 10 to 30 years after the appearance of your after the appearance of your primary stage. So, we divide the tertiary stage into three stages or three manifestations. First, we have here the granulomatous lesion or your gomatous. Granulomatous lesion can be found here. It tries to affect the skin, your fibroblasts, uh, your skin, your fibroblasts, your skin, your, your, I mean, your skin, your bones, and we have also here your subcutaneous tissues. So, granulomatous lesion is a lesion characterized here by the aggregations of your lymphocytes, uh, epithelial cells, and we have also the fibroblasts, wherein the lesion could grow to several centimeters in diameter, whereas others, after that one, this lesion could eventually, pwede siya mag heal spontaneously, or others would just remain destructive. And your granulomatous lesion, or gomatous lesion, is actually the representation of your uh, host immune response to the infection. The second one, we have here the involvement of the heart, the cardiovascular system, in the form of your um, characterized, we try to involve here your ascending aorta, characterized by destruction of your uh, elastic tissues. Manifestation of that includes your aortic aneurysm, thickening of the uh, valve leaflets, resulting to your aortic regurgitation, and we have also here your angina pectoris. And we have here the neurosyphilis, which is already your late stage. Although the CNS involvement could already occur even after the primary stage. But then, uh, in some cases, neurosyphilis is always an indication of the late stage or the chronic stage. So the neurosyphilis involves here the following manifestations. Number one, tabis dorsalis is the degeneration of your um, spinal cord. Then we have also here the general paresis. And the third one is your chronic progressive dementia. Laboratory tests to diagnose the tertiary stage is only your treponemal antibody test. It will give a negative result with your dark field microscopy. It will also give a negative result with your non-treponemal antibody test, which includes your VDRL and CV. VDRL and RPR it will give a negative result. Okay, then we have also here the congenital syphilis. So, congenital syphilis here is infection that occur when the mother is infected by the syphilis during the pregnancy. It could transmit infection to the baby. So, basically occurring here in the second and third trimester pregnancy and at the stage, especially during the latency period. Manifestation of the congenital syphilis includes the following. Number one, the patients or the baby might be asymptomatic with infection, but some would have your Number one, necrotizing funicitis, the most important manifestation of your congenital syphilis among the baby. It characterized here by the inflammation of the umbilical cord. The baby will also have here a clear or hemorrhagic rhinitis or the runny nose. And then we have here the skin eruption. Okay, the skin eruption is characterized here by maculopapular rash that affects here the mouth area or even the palms and soles of the feet of the patient. 